So I have two words to describe the scene that I'm walking towards and hope to photograph. And that is atmosphere and minimalism or minimalist or just minimal. Yeah, wait till you see this. So the weather seems to have taken quite a turn for the worse and it's now very windy, wet and cold, which is actually what I expected for the most of the week and I think we've been very lucky, very fortunate up until now. But I have a feeling that this scene we're photographing now doesn't suffer too badly from bad weather because if you look behind me, just come into shot now, yeah there we go, they've got this beautiful beach, this almost infinite beach that seems to curve on to nowhere and it reaches out to these lovely mountains faded in the distance and then just on the other side of the beach over here got another body of water so it's a really cool scene and everything's so monochrome there's no color in this at all everything's just black white and gray and photographing this is incredibly challenging not only because we've got a quite strong headwind making it difficult with the rain and obviously camera shake but we have this monster monstrous mountain just here that's Estrahorn. now the reason I say that this mountain is a problem isn't because it's blocking the light or you know getting in the way of your shot or anything like that the reason that this mountain is a problem is because your instinct is to shoot that mountain that's the feature that's the main subject include it in your shot whereas actually to do that uh, especially from this vantage point would not benefit anyone um, it certainly wouldn't benefit the composition. So what I'm shooting and a, and a few of the guys here we're all shooting is uh, this scene here but a panoramic, a lovely panoramic so you can see the mountains, the ocean, the strip of beach going off to nowhere and then this body of water and then over here we have more mountains. Now if you're doing a pano and you come too far round you start to get this, you start to get the, the big mountain, Estrahorn. And if you include that, it's going to throw your whole pano out of whack because it'll be, it'll be completely unbalanced. So the trick, and it's more difficult than it sounds, the trick is to actually ignore the big mountain. Just ignore it altogether, at least when shooting a pano, that is. And this is fantastic. We have beautiful atmosphere. There's mist coming off the ocean, rolling over the black beach. And it's a difficult shot to compose. It really is. And I think a panoramic is probably the best way to go to show this beautiful scene in front of us and to create quite a striking image. Technically, it's a bit challenging. As I said before, we are we have a headwind. I don't know if you can hear that. Headwind and a bit of rain. Probably. And go. There is nothing more challenging than shooting a panel with a headwind and rain because your lens is exposed to the elements for too long and it's almost impossible to get a clean set of images. So what I'm doing here is helping out Dave by wiping off the raindrops between shots, hopefully helping him to get a nice clean pano. Between rain showers I managed to fire off my own pano. First, I like to do a sweep of the full scene whilst watching my histogram to make sure that I don't blow out any of my highlights. Because of the strong wind and long focal length of 90mm, I need to shoot a fast shutter speed. So, I up my ISO to 400 and drop my aperture to f7.1, which is quite a large aperture for landscapes, but I'm not too concerned. I have no foreground interest, so depth of field is not an issue, so I can pretty much shoot at any aperture. I could shoot wide open if I needed to, but with ISO 400 f7.1 gives me a shutter speed of around about 200th of a second, which is just quick enough to not be too concerned with wind shake. And that's pretty much it. It's about coming here, finding your subject, visualizing what you want to shoot, how you're going to execute it, and 
using the conditions to your advantage. It's a miserable day, it's miserable, but it suits the scene. And that is very, very important. I mentioned that it's important to visualize your composition and this can be difficult with panels. One thing I like to do is to take a phone shot and then crop it or use the phone's pano mode. This will give you a great idea as to where you want your photo to start and end before setting up and capturing the image using your camera and tripod. I think we'll be heading off soon because this rain's getting heavier. So I'm gonna throw the image up on screen and I'm hoping that it's a really nice pano quite a unique landscape. Well, that was a challenging photo shoot, but what was even more of a challenge was stitching together that panel. So let's go back to my office and see exactly where we went wrong and how we fixed it. So, um, yeah, I had a bit of a nightmare stitching together this panel that you can see here. And this is the final version. And I chose a black and white conversion because the scene was very monochrome to begin with. There was no color in it. So, you know, I just felt by doing a black and white conversion, it emphasized that, added to the mood and really helped with the overall feel of the image. And I'm very, very happy with the final panel, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare now. This is the first time this has happened to me where I've shot a panel and it hasn't stitched. So let me very quickly show you what happens. First of all, in Lightroom. So here you can see my images, uh, 11 photos in total, probably overkill, but I like to always shoot a bit wider than I need to. Um, so yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this should be fine. The tripod was level and the camera was moved just a small amount. So if I go into photo, photo merge, panorama, you can see that it does a great job, but it doesn't finish the job. It's half a job, half a job pano. And it's chopped off the end of the beach. And for me, the way the beach sort of fades into infinity, and then you can see the ocean and the lake either side of the beach, that's the real draw of the composition and the photograph. So uh, yeah, bit of a nightmare. So let me cancel this and we'll have a crack in Photoshop and see if that can do any better. Photo, edit in, merge to panorama in Photoshop. So while we wait for Photoshop to do its thing, because uh, it's gonna be a while, because it's a big file, I just wanted to point out that my charity t-shirt finally arrived. Um, I'm so sorry to everybody who had to wait. I think I waited about three weeks for this, which is unacceptable. Uh, I, I think uh, I'll be looking at alternative t-shirt website selling platforms in the future, but you'll be glad to know if you missed the video a couple of weeks ago, I think this t-shirt raised about 3,700 pounds which is amazing and four, that's about $4,700. So thank you so much to everybody who per purchased, purchased an absolutely stunning t-shirt. So yeah, very, very happy and very proud that this was able to raise such money for charity. And I think we are ready in Photoshop. So this is uh, Photoshop's attempt and you can see it's actually done an identical stitch uh, as Lightroom at the top here, um, cutting off the end of the beach, which is no good. Uh, but what it has done is it's kind of done me a separate, uh, a separate mini panel just here, which is the end of the beach. Um, now I'm not sure why it failed to add on this to this, I don't know. So basically what I had to do was go in and do it manually. So these are my two layers here. And you can see if I can just drag that over and roughly line it up, I should have no problem getting a clean stitch. Now, so I'm not entirely sure how I went wrong with this panel because to my recollection, my tripod was level. It was a clean, smooth rotation through all of the images and it should have been fine, but look at this. You can clearly see here, 
Um, I've lined up this, see this peak here, this little, little nugget just on the top there? Well that is perfectly lined up with the layer below it. Um, but the beach doesn't line up, the shoreline doesn't line up. That tells me that either <laughs> somehow I've accidentally zoomed in a tiny bit, in fact I'm going to go into Lightroom and check that out, or maybe I knocked my tripod without realising it, I, I have no idea. Um, so basically what I had to do was just get these roughly lined up and then go in and very quickly mask off the edge of the, uh, the mountain here and, and do a bit of warping and make it all line up as best I could. I'm not going to do it now, I spent a while doing it, um, but essentially I had to manually stitch on the end part. Of course I cropped the file because it doesn't need to be as big as it was. So after I got rid of this edge here and did a bit of masking and stuff like that, it wasn't too bad. I then took the file back into Lightroom and did my black and white conversion. Um, bit of a pain and this has never happened to me before so I need to figure out where exactly I went wrong. My suspicion looking at that Photoshop file is that I accidentally knocked the zoom ring. So let's have a look. All right, 91 mil, 91 mil, 91 mil, 91 mil, 91 mil. So they're all actually at uh, 91 millimeters, which means I didn't accidentally knock my zoom ring. So uh, I must have kicked my tripod because that, those horizons, they do not line up and I can't comprehend why. Another reason why Lightroom or Lightroom and Photoshop may have struggled is if you look at the sort of three or four images where it couldn't grasp it, it couldn't stitch, there's not much detail here. There isn't much for the software to latch onto. Those mountains in the background, they're very, very faint and very distant. And the sea, the sea is constantly moving. So again, the software doesn't have points of reference to latch onto. I'm guessing that that probably contributed to it. I'm guessing I accidentally knocked my tripod, but the main lesson here, the real lesson is that I only took one panel, one shot from A to B, or image one to 11. And that's because I was running a workshop. It's not about me getting my shot. I just wanted to quick dem quickly demonstrate, get my own shot, and then work with the group. So it's important that I don't spend half an hour working on my own images. Um, but that is that was probably a mistake. I guess you sort of when doing a panel or anything uh, where there is possibilities of it going wrong without you noticing, uh, take two or three. So like in the old film days, they used to shoot doubles. Well, I would say do that with panos. Um, but yeah, totally really happy with the final image and I love the black and white conversion. So yeah, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've taken something away from this. Um, probably not, uh, other than don't kick your tripod and make sure you do more than one pano. Um, so yeah, thank you. And uh, tune in next week where I do a one take video. I know how you all love the one take videos. Well, we knock one of those out. And yeah, it's, uh, it's always fun. Stuff always goes wrong. And uh, I suppose that's the joy. So until then, Thanks for watching, bye for now.